The movie begins in a hotel room where we see an older retired teacher who calls herself Nancy, anxiously waiting for an escort she has hired to satisfy her. Meanwhile, we see a guy, Leo Grande, at a cafe having coffee before making his way to the hotel room. Leo soon arrives and Nancy welcomes him in. He asks if he can kiss her on the cheeks and she agrees. Leo compliments her and they chat for a bit before they decide to have a drink. Still feeling anxious, Nancy finds it difficult to express herself. Leo tells her that she doesn't have to feel bad because he treats his job professionally and doesn't feel demeaned. Though still unconvinced, Nancy expresses her concerns, but Leo assures that she bought his services and he is doing it willingly, just like how he does so with his other clients. Leo inquires about her desires, and she restlessly expresses her desire to have sex. To calm her down, Leo leans forward to kiss her lips. However, that doesn't seem to work as she just wants to have sex now and get over it. Leo advises against it and that they should just take things slowly and enjoy the process naturally. Nancy proceeds to reveal that she has never had an orgasm before and that Leo will be the second person she will be having sex with after her late husband. Nancy is afraid that her performance during intercourse will be disappointing but Leo reassures her that he is fine with it. Still feeling insecure, Nancy questions him again if he is forced to do such a job, to which he confirms. Leo then suggests that they should drop this subject and go to bed together. However, Nancy soon gets paranoid and inquires if he needs to take any form of pills to get into the mood, but he says no. She proceeds to ask him what is the oldest person he has had intercourse with and he says 82. Nancy is surprised and she feels a sense of relief. She wonders which part of her could be attractive to Leo and he proceeds to describe and make her feel aroused. However, she gets paranoid again and requests to go to the restroom to change. While Nancy is in the restroom, Leo removes some of his clothes and prepares to wait for her on the bed. Nancy takes her time in the restroom and Leo gets bored so he decides to drink some wine and eats chocolate. Moments later, Nancy comes out and Leo goes to kiss her, but she claims she doesn't like the smell of the chocolate. Therefore, he goes to wash up, and when he returns, she tells him that he should leave and that he doesn't have to bother because she will pay him regardless. He inquires why she chose to hire him and questions whether his appearance meets her standards. She concedes that he is indeed attractive, he tells her he knows she must have thought well and considered her actions before hiring him in the first place, and she doesn't have to feel awful. She considers that she had thought about it for weeks before proceeding with the decision, but it doesn't make it less morally awful for her. He convinces her to at least get into bed with him and she eventually gets on, and they talk further. He goes to help her get drinks and adjusts the room lights to prepare for bed. Later, Nancy talks about her intimate relationship with her husband being unsatisfactory and starts getting emotional. Leo empathizes with her and gets to their business for the night. In the next scene, Nancy is in the room and she's waiting for Leo. She has ordered him for the second time and when he knocks and she opens, he tells her he is surprised. She wonders why since they are in the same room, and she informs him that she had intentionally booked the same room because she doesn't want to start all over again. However, he tells her that he is surprised because she had booked him the second time. He goes to sit and they start to chat. Nancy brings out a list of the things she wants to try, and she wishes that they try out all the activities before the end of the day because she doesn't think she wants to book him again as he's too expensive to afford the third time. Without wasting time, Nancy immediately prepares for the first activity, which is to satisfy him down there. She proceeds to help him remove his trousers, but her phone rings and she goes to answer it. While Nancy is away, Leo looks at himself in the mirror as he is thinking about something. Moments later, Nancy returns and she tells him it was her daughter who called her and suggests that they should continue from where they have stopped. She feels weird, so he helps her by speaking with her to make her feel better, and he also plays music for them to dance to. As they dance, she receives a call from her daughter and goes to attend to the call. 
After the call, Nancy talks about the stresses she feels from being a parent, and Leo suggests that he should give her a massage to make her feel more comfortable. As he massages her, she asks him if his mother will be disappointed in what he is doing, but he diverts the question away. She proceeds to touch his arms and feels turned off by his muscles, because she has always been insecure about her body. She requests for him to remove his shirt, and he agrees. Mesmerized by his well-built body, she can't help but request to touch his body, and he agrees as well. However, she suddenly gets paranoid again, and asks him to put his clothes back on. Nancy explains that she has always been ashamed of herself, but Leo encourages her that she should embrace her body and be more confident in herself. Nancy inquires whether Leo is his real name, and he says no. He questions back to her whether Nancy is her real name, and she says no. She inquires about his younger brother, but he doesn't say much, and suggests that they should do a teacher-student roleplay to lighten the mood. However, Nancy dismisses the idea and starts talking about her work as a teacher, how she felt it was morally wrong for young girls to push themselves on guys, and says that she didn't imagine she would find herself in the same situation. She talks about how the young girls reduced their skirts from knee up until she could barely see their teeth, and she felt it was ridiculous. Leo doesn't feel this way as he thinks they are free to do whatever they want. She tells him that the males aren't like him, and not all of them can control each other. She asks if he thinks what he is doing is illegal, and he tells him that paying money for intercourse is a crime. But he doesn't take more for intercourse, instead he gets paid for his company. Nancy starts to doubt if Leo is tricking her into paying for more sessions with him, and he seems to be offended. Leo proceeds to give her what she wants. Nancy proceeds to unzip his pants but starts hesitating again and can't bring herself to do it. Leo encourages her and suggests that perhaps she might need something different. They begin a heart-to-heart -heart talk and he talks about how the requests from his previous clients vary. He assures that he is not judgmental at all with all his clients and that seems to make Nancy feel better. Nancy decides to try giving him a blowjob, and she successfully does so. In the next scene, they meet for the third time, and he goes down on her, which she enjoys. She wonders what would trigger her orgasm, and talks about her sex experiences with her husband, while praising Leo for his great service. She admits to stalking him and discovers his real name. Upon hearing this, he becomes disappointed, dresses up, and firmly requests that she refrain from booking him in the future. He reminds her of her boundaries, rejecting her suggestion of friendship and coffee. She inquires about his reluctance to embrace his profession and wonders why his mother remains oblivious to it. However, he becomes enraged and departs. Moments later, he returns because he has dropped his phone. While searching for his phone, he reveals being disowned at the age of 15, and he had no choice but to survive on his own. After retrieving his phone, he leaves. In the next scene, Nancy is at the cafe for her fourth meeting with Leo, which is shockingly a coffee date. She meets the waiter who tells her she is one of her former students, Becky. Becky inquires about the reason for her presence, and she asserts that she has come to meet a friend. Upon Leo's arrival, Becky is taken aback to discover that her friend is surprisingly young. Leo, in an attempt to protect Nancy, explains that he has come to sell his car. They start to talk and Nancy appreciates him for showing up again. He informs her that he has told his brother about his profession, and he is confident that his mother has little concern for him. This belief stems from her indifference when she encountered him a few years ago, merely walking past without acknowledgement. She encourages him that he isn't a disappointment, and she has even recommended him to her friends as the king of menopause. Before leaving, Becky informs Leo about Nancy's behavior as a teacher, recounting a day when Nancy publicly criticized them, labeling them as a promiscuous person, and asserting that they are unworthy of anything. Nancy reaches out to Becky, expressing regret for her previous words and taking the opportunity to introduce Leo. After their conversation, they excuse themselves and head to the room to get to their business. 
After they are done, Leo tries to give her a toy to pleasure herself for an orgasm, but notices she is already touching herself. This is her first orgasm and she feels satisfied. Nancy informs him that this will be their final session, and she extends her best wishes to him. Leo responds by telling her to take care, and then asks her to leave the room. In the final scene, Nancy looks at herself in the mirror, feeling more confident about her body as the movie ends. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Leave a like to help the channel out. Also leave a comment if you'd like us to recap your favorite movie. Thanks for watching.